Hey, look at this. Uh, Janice, how about you go first? How's it, how's it going? Hey, uh, everybody, we have a special guest here today. Um, this is the esteemed artist, Tim Kent, who Janice is about to tell us about. I did my projects on you. <laughs> Okay, I'll go. I'll go first then. Thank you, Janice. Where are you? Boom! Oh. I presented. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay, so this is the artwork and life of Tim Kent, which is kind of making me nervous since he was right there. Don't be nervous. Okay. He's not Who's, as mean as he looks. Who is he? Tim Kent is a New York-based artist who is recognized for his dynamic paintings. He works mainly as an artist with dabbles in architectural design, music, videography, and animation. His exhibit his exhibitions allow his viewers to lose themselves in his beautiful, almost surreal, and scenic drawings. Here's a, a silent hour. 2018 oil on linen, 100 times 72 inches. That's him, and that's his dog. That's my other dog. I have another dog back there now. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll pop his head in in a second. Oh, that's cool. His artwork. What even is his artwork? When I asked him how he got his signature style, he replied with, I think I developed my style because I wanted to make paintings that reflected the world around me. In this case, my world was still in was still and still is New York, Manhattan in particular, where I lived during my teenage years, is full of right angles and uh, dramatic buildings. So I began to implement geometry in my work as I think it reflects an aspect of modern living. In other words, his art style began as he was surrounded with the harsh and contrasting silhouettes of New York buildings. As a New York resident, I can also agree that the angularness of my home sweet home has resided in my artwork and subjects in my art life. Here is a failed legacy, 2015 oil on canvas, um, 60 cents, 80 inches. Baylor Lake, which is really popular, 2018 oil on canvas, 80 times 100 inches. And Deterioration, which is one of my favorites, 2015 oil on canvas, 80 times 100 inches. And that's him again. Why? My <laughs> Tim can see that I am inspired by events in the world we live in, from local to international events, things like ecological change, politics, or even watching my dog sniff a fire hydrant. All of these things make me want to make a painting. To explain further, he uses his art to express his feelings about anything happening in his life. Furthermore, I want the viewer to enjoy looking at my work, to find themselves getting lost in the work, without realizing. I want them to think of things like a daydream and then come back to reality. He wants his viewers to encompass themselves in his artwork and kind of live within the present moment. Just the viewer, the artwork, and the imagination. Here is Isotopia, 2018 oil on canvas, 100 times 100 inches. I use some of these perspective yellow lines in my recreation artwork. A window to another world. After learning more about Tim Kent and why he does art, I am even I am an even bigger fan of his work. If that's true. He has achieved this state of wonder in his art that no one can replicate. This way he incorporates super dynamic lines with soft brush strokes and makes his artwork seem dreamlike. I also like his inspiration behind his work. Sometimes the only thing that drives you to make art is what's happening around you. Political problems, economical problems, personal problems, that all makes me want to create. New York also has a huge influence over Tim Kent and I's work with the sun rising over the city skyline, tall dominating skyscrapers, and the edges of the streets and buildings stabbing to the blue beyond. It's great, smiley face. And then here is my rendition. Chef kiss. Excellent. Yay. So what is the phone? Oh, that's just uh, like a selfie thing. Are you going to read it out loud? Uh, this is not a poem. I think it's just like an explanation. You want to share that with us, please? Or, or is it you mean it's like, okay, uh, I understand. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. I think, um, Jason, wow. 
Wow, I'm flattered, and thank you for doing that. That's very cool of you. Thank you. And I think, um, so, I mean, are you the first student to be doing this today? Is that the... Janice stepped right up. Uh, she, Janice is not my first student to have studied your work, Tim. Uh-huh. Uh, somebody last year did it. I don't know if he got in touch with you, but, um, yeah, Janice, Janice is brave and she was willing to present first. We just, we just, uh, started our meeting about 15 minutes ago. So, um, yeah, uh, Tim, it's great to see you. I haven't seen your face in, in, in real time in a while. We look exactly the same. I know. Who does? You do? We do. We do. Yeah. Uh, every, everybody who was wondering about that, it is a requirement to uh, be bald if you're <laughs> a painter. Yeah, so uh, by, by the time you graduate, you basically have to, everyone just has to shave their head yeah. and get round glasses. That's what everyone thought, Round right? glasses and bald, and you just have to keep it up. Exactly. But so, Janice, are you, are you also painting? Are you working mainly digitally? How are you working? Um, I started off as like a traditional artist, but I kind of, since like there's not really that much materials out in the pandemic, I switched over to digital. Uh, and what, what are you working on mainly in terms of, uh, what, what digital platforms are you using mainly? I use a free app called Ivis Paint X. Okay. It's like... Just, are, you, are you working with photos first and then building off of them, or how are you developing your work? Um, I have this really uh, weird kind of paint-ish style. Um, so I use kind of references, but then most of it is from my imagination, and I really like to use pastel colors. Right on. I mean, I do the same thing. That's kind of how I build my own work. It's, uh, I, I, I either have a response to something that I see, and I photograph stuff all the time, and then what I'll do is I'll begin to extrapolate from that image to create my own image. Um, and I think that's a great way to work. I also think, um, you know, I love working digitally. I use digital as my sketchbook mainly. But I like going back into the materials because I think there's something really cool about walking up and seeing something physically. You know, like, you know, again, like we all, we're all growing up in New York. So the thing is, when you're walking down the street, you see... Uh, you know, a, a huge wild style or a huge piece throw up on the wall, you know, like a big piece of graffiti. It's amazing because there's also the tactility of it, right? There's like the, uh, there's the surface of the wall, there's the way the colors kind of like bounce at you. And you have a real relationship with it that's not sort of just visual, you know, which is cool. So, I mean, I, I go back and forth between the two of them myself. Right now, because of the pandemic and remote learning, we're finding a lot of ways to uh, kind of maximize the tools that we have that are, it's actually really democratizing because it's like when you use something mm -hmm. like a digital art drawing tool, especially a free one that you can just download, um, it makes it so that all these amazing uh, graphic tools are available to everyone. If we were here in the building, we'd be getting our hands dirty with all kinds of things. Of course, um, yeah. Huh? Of course. Yeah. So it's it's nice that students are able to work digitally. Um, and guys, where Tim works in the part of Brooklyn where he works, there is an incredible wealth of street art. Uh, and I, if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, Tim, that's like one of the, the, the things that you are able to kind of saturate your life with on a daily basis as you head to and from the studio. Yeah, I love it. I think, uh, I mean, walking through, this neighborhood was, there's a mecca, well, there were a couple of mecca, you know, Queens had a mecca, parts of like that, there's a, Transitionary part of Brooklyn that had uh, that had a, it was a mecca. And Manhattan, many of these guys who were my students last year, we did a big street art unit, and they learned about Five Points. But we didn't really get yeah, into so like the Brooklyn scene as much. Well, it, it, but might have do. I mean, they have so much so much good stuff. Obviously, this is pandemic. There's not a lot going up, but we have so much good stuff, and I can't help but get affected by the, the colors because these guys are using you know, these people are out there using so many crazy colors, and. I pick it up in my work, and you know, I want my work to be kind of neutral, but I can't help but bring in these acid colors like uh, that industrial orange paint. I think it's really cool. I love that stuff. The high vis? What's that? The high vis orange? You know, I love it. Yeah. Thank you. But I mean, again, the visual is where it's at right now. The whole world is kind of. What do you guys think? Like, what does your class think about like uh, working digitally the whole time? Who loves it? Who hates it? It's cool. 
everybody? Everyone's just like, what is this? Everyone's like, <laughs> uh, who, who else is into working digitally? Raise your hand. Use the raise your hand feature. Yeah, Janice is all shook up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. You can see, you can see the, the lush light in the background here. Huh? Tim, can you um, give us a little tour? Or are you on a desktop? Yeah, let me let me just. I'll join with the guest. I'll join with my guest uh, as a guest. On, I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my my uh, desktop with me because it can kind of move. So let's do it quickly, so I don't bore you guys too much. Um, this is, I'm just going to wheel it around. Just wheel it. Uh, this is the front end of the studio. I've got a couple of different works going on. Can everyone see that? Yep. Okay, and then if I turn it around this way, this is where I do my sort of drawings. This big tent over here. And uh, because there's lots of uh, dust particles that go everywhere. And then this wall behind me is just being set up. To uh, do some paintings on. So what I do when I start my paintings, just I'll just give you a quick uh, explanation because why not? School, right? uh, what I do, I used to stretch them out the whole time, but now I just put them up on the wall, and you know I tape out the area that I want to paint, and I'll just start painting it. And I usually try and use all the material I have because I think that if you have a lot of materials, like if you buy materials that pay expenses, be they're precious because they come out of you know they come out of the earth, and you know if you don't use them, you're just wasting good stuff. Um, and so I try and use everything. So as much of the canvas that I buy, I try and use as much of the paint, squeeze every little glass drop out, and uh, get it on here. And then what it's done, what I'll do is I'll transfer it onto a stretcher. So if we go to the second room, I got two rooms. Uh, so I've never done this on there yet. By the way, Tim, I was just telling them we were going to have a second special guest today that who you and I both know. Who's that? Can you guess who it is? Uh, who's coming on? It, I'll give you a hint. It was somebody who lives in Alaska. Wait, uh, who? I don't know. We were going to have David Pettibone in here today. Oh, my goodness. But he said that he w – yeah, because somebody else is doing him. But uh, unfortunately, he's having technological issues. <laughs> I, didn't know he was, I didn't know he was in Alaska. Yeah, man. He's <laughs> been up in Alaska painting trees. That's amazing. You should follow him on, on Instagram. He's amazing. I will. I will. <laughs> I will. Uh, so I'll just show you this quickly, guys. And then I'll let you get back to the. Uh, so this is the. Uh, and basically, there's a large painting on this wall. I can't really show you too much because it's hard to show with the camera. And then I got two finished paintings in the back here. And so what I've done is I've basically painted out on the wall and then I stretch them out. And so I can, uh, so I can like quickly make them, and if I need to store them or whatever, that's how they get finished up. So you paint first, and you stretch afterwards. Yeah, you know, I used to, I used to stretch all the. Uh, there's one here that Janice might like. But, you know, uh, I used to, I used to paint. I mean, on the on the stretch canvases, but the problem with the stretch canvases is that you spend a lot of time and effort making them that when you get one that fails, it's often very disappointing. So I figured try and finish the work as best as possible before it goes into that sort of completion stage. Janice, thank you. I feel honored. I'm very happy to be here doing this. This is amazing. Um, and this is this one might be more so like the dance anyway, because it kind of gets a bit uh, kind of gets a bit more sci-fi and environmental. And, and, and can you guys see that? Looks amazing. Guys, if you if you click on Tim's icon in the chat or in the in the meeting and hit pin, uh, it'll blow up his window bigger than the other ones. And you get a better view. But I got like, you know, I, put, I began thinking about all the as as the water levels rise, I'm thinking about stories that I could tell with that deal with people in water. I got all these little people in here. And then I was thinking about how to
I think it's kind of like a, a bit, bit of an epic sci-fi spectacular. So, so other than so other than the influence that you're getting from just kind of being a New Yorker, what other kinds of things are you looking at, reading, watching that uh, play into these images? Uh, well, has everyone watched? I think it's called the Social Network. The Social Network. Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen that? Who's seen that? The movie about uh, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. Well, no, the one that you know, recently about the, you know, just the, the way media companies sort of, uh, take our information and how they kind of own us at this point. And so that's something I'm interested in as an idea. Uh, I'm also interested in things like I do think the environment is always fascinating. I think we're I think we're going to have some crazy uh, crazy years coming up. But at the same time, it seems like Things like wind farms are really positive signs, sort of offshore off wind farms. That sort of stuff is just what we're talking about is sort of bio impacts. So bio modifying or eco modifications for a good effect, right? Because you know, there's no way the world will go back to a better state. All we can do is manage it at this point and try not to let it get worse. So that, these are some of the things that I'm kind of like thinking about when I'm making this. And obviously, you know, I like drawing and I like the idea of. Uh, I like the idea of types of architecture, so I kind of put that stuff together. Right on. Does that work? That's, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So I'll let you guys get on. Um, Janice, it was a real pleasure meeting you. And uh, thank you very much for choosing to do uh, the project on me. I thought it was excellent. And uh, I, uh, maybe one day we'll see you at the at MLF show. Yeah, if we didn't have COVID, we'd be doing studio visits for sure. Um, Tim, any last important points that you like? Any interesting tidbits of information you want to share that weren't in the presentation? Uh, no, just you know, if you're going to do, if you're going to do artwork, you can do it either therapeutically or kind of professionally. I think the one thing you have to be careful about is you're going to be overwhelmed by this. There's no easy way around being an artist. It's very hard to you know, stay focused. So just if you make it a daily practice, I think that's the best. Even if it's a sketch. And look around you. Everything is around you. Right on. Practice every day. Thank you, Tim. My pleasure. See you later. See ya. Bye. So I'll give it up for Tim. Okay. Uh, tough act to follow, I realize, but um, let's see what we can do. <laughs> you know, if if uh, if Coach D can't do it, I can. Um, <laughs> if he can't make you sweat, I will. All right, uh, let's let's hear from somebody else.